Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Living Astrology with Janet Hickox. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back, and let's chat about what is happening up in the stars above for today, and we'll take a peek ahead at what is going on in the week. I was at a loss for words this morning as to how, what, how, to, how to quantify and qualify the energy of the week ahead, so I settled on discordant, a discordant week ahead, and I... I did that for a couple of reasons. One, we have a very powerful uh, Mercury square Saturn that is literally dominating the entire week. And we'll talk a little bit more in a few minutes about what that's going to mean for everybody. We have Mercury changing direction this week. And just those two things alone are the big news for the week and are the ones that are powering some of the potential, especially here in the U.S., for miscommunication, for all kinds of craziness, words spoken, uh, thoughts and things like that going astray. Uh, so we have a week where we're going to want to be very careful about what we're focusing on and what we're saying when we say anything. So measuring your words and keeping your thoughts clean are going to be so very important. And I'm really glad that we spent some time Friday and Thursday of last week really talking about that idea about how we create a reality, where a, a reality being created by thought is one thing, because we know that doesn't happen immediately, right? Because th our thoughts are slower energy. But when you put that with powerful emotions, then what you're really focusing on is manifesting at sometimes the speed of light. So making sure that we're focusing on what we desire, even in the face of information that may be misleading, misguided, or not what you wanted to hear or not what you were expecting. So at least for us here in the US, that's gonna be a major factor in our election that is uh, tomorrow. And for those of you around the world um, who are not in the USA, this is still a major aspect pattern that's happening that's really calling us into our hearts and away from the power of the mind. Uh, which can confuse and upset and create havoc for everybody. Uh, so let's just say good morning to everybody really quickly. I see JLo and Mimi and JLo says, hello, Astro fam. That's all I see right now. Of course, this is always lagging for me. So I'm not sure. I'm never sure what's going on with uh, YouTube. Right now I'm seeing myself holding up my cup saying good morning. So how funny is that? That was a while back. So I'm going to go away from there so I don't get caught up and I'll come back and say good morning to other people as time goes on. Uh, so here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to take a look at the moon. The moon moved into Gemini very early this morning, one of my favorite placements for the moon. And we're going to talk about the only aspect that the moon is making today, which settles things down a bit with a trine to Venus. And then we're going to take a look at the week ahead, some by the days, so I can give you sort of an outline of what to expect. And then we're going to take a look at our uh, Pleiadian Earth energy for the day. And then I'm going to take you a little deeper into some human design information and we'll look at the chart for the week and talk more about the gate and the gate of the sun and especially the gate of the earth, because that's the one that rises up and challenges us to move into more of the focus of the sun. So that's kind of our outline for today's show. Uh, let's start by talking about the moon in Gemini. Interesting that this week with Mercury, the ruling planet of Gemini in a square to Saturn, difficult thinking, difficult words, um, and then Mercury, the ruling planet of Gemini, going direct, also Virgo. So it's not just Gemini, but Gemini and Virgo. And then the moon in Gemini through today and tomorrow and on into Wednesday. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, basic noise going on, really. Restlessness energy. We have the energy of communication and, of course, information flowing in and flowing out. And that can be quite confusing for those people who aren't used to that fast pace of the fast making uh, or the fast movement of the mind and of communication. This is also a sign of motion. And with motion, we have the need to move. 
right? Getting in our cars and maybe taking short trips or taking walks or doing things that help us keep in motion. And this is also a fairly social sign, this sign social uh, in the respect of it's a, their great communicator energy and being able to speak in a social situation, uh, being witty and wise, that kind of thing in different conversations. So it is really a good sign for the moon to be in as it helps us connect with our words and the emotions behind our words. But it also begs us to slow down a bit before you say what you're going to say to make sure that the alignment of heart and words are uh, true and not that you've gotten yourself into a situation of saying words that might harm or hurt somebody else's feelings because emotions are what the moon is representing here. Uh, the moon in Gemini also takes care of autos, our automobiles, our cars, why sometimes we experience in a Mercury retrograde the, um, the problems with our vehicles, uh, short trips, restless energy, excitability. And again, this is taking us through all of today, all of tomorrow and into Wednesday. Uh, in the sense of the mind, Gemini also works with the energy of learning and teaching. So the communication of thoughts and ideas through the learning uh, atmosphere. So we're talking about the curiosity driven factual information. So something occurred like yesterday, I had to look up the word, what was the word I was looking? Oh, anachronism. You know, I had this idea in my mind of what I thought it meant, but I thought I'm just going to go check the definition because I really wanted to, I, I'm following a thread of curiosity to make sure that I was uh, thinking of it in the right way. And that came from an article that I actually posted for everybody to read on uh, the Living Astrology Facebook page yesterday, or I might, might've put it on the community page about how the Uranus, um, uh, Neptune conjunction back in 1993 has really set the stage for where we are today in how we get our information and how that information, the very getting of information and how it has played into the whole polarizing divisiveness here uh, in the planet. So it's really kind of an interesting article to read. Uh, so following your curiosity into looking for information, this is a sign that rules your formal education from say like K through 12. Your higher education is ruled by Sagittarius, the opposite sign of Gemini. It is the sign of the media, the media, both social media, print media, so your books, but also broadcasting media, right? This is a sign that rules the throat center and the throat center then being the center where we hear, where we receive news, where somebody's broadcasting that information to us and as well the internet. In communication, Gemini rules writing and speaking and listening and teaching and understanding of what it is that we're hearing from different people and their different opinions. It is also a sign of logic uh, where the uh, energy has us being aware of all the options and knowing possibly with the moon here that we have an emotional connection to one part of the truth or one part of the information and not the other, but that we're aware that there are varying opinions and varying ways that we could look at the information that we're receiving. This is a sign of cleverness, good with their hands. They could be great handymen, handy women, uh, good with understanding how to make things work in an ingenious way. So there's ingenuity here. Social skills, of course, as well. Um, accepting everybody, accepting everything. Uh, quick thinking, enjoying the moment, being in the moment, wittiness and a sociable nature. The overactive mind is what brings us the more negative aspects with the moon in Gemini. And that might be excessive questioning, excessive fact finding, nervousness, indecision, the usual run of the mill, mind anxiety creating things that happen uh, in the body. Gemini rules the hands, the wrists, the arms, the shoulders, right? Two, two, two. And lungs, two lungs, breathing, because it's a sign of the twins, right? Breathing, I mean, lungs too. Uh, so breathing as well, Gemini needs to remember to take deep breaths. We'll all need to remember not to breathe so shallowly for the next couple of days. Breath in, 
slow release of the breath, right? Sort of that meditative, deep breath, deep breathing that can bring us calming and more peacefulness in the a <laughs> face of a lot of discordant energy for the week. Uh, Gemini, believably, unbelievably, rules the nervous system. So when we're thinking about anxiety and being nervous or something that happens to be maybe an emotional connection that the moon is making to the energy of Mercury in and uh, being in the sign of Gemini and hay fever, hay fever. Yeah, I always suffer with that myself. So those are the things that we want to watch out for. Um, I also want you to remember that this is an energy right now that's very wobbly right? Very, it's not clear. None of this energy is very clear. And it's not that it's messed up because of uh, anything other than just the power of the transits that are going on. Mercury squaring Saturn. Uh, Mercury getting ready to change out of retrograde and into retro shade, uh, hanging, if as it were, in this slow space, very much not going anywhere. It's sort of like the void of course moon where we say the moon is wobbling. Uh, or wandering. Uh, the, the planet Mercury right now is also sort of wandering. It's almost at a standstill. And that standstill leads to the uh, stationary direct. And it's not like the planet begins. It's not actually moving this way, by the way. It's just appearing like that from our standpoint. And it's not like suddenly on Tuesday when he turns direct that he just suddenly zooms on and moves into new territory. Oh, no, no. He hangs around right at that same degree for a while. It won't be for at least a week before we note, oh, yes, he's moved on, right? So things will be sort of hanging in the balance here for the next few days. And that is always with a Mercury retrograde turning into direct or Mercury direct turning into retrograde. Uh, but it just happens to be made more profound, at least here in the U.S., with that very powerful election, right, where we are electing the next president, setting the direction and course for the, uh, the, the country for the next four years. So there's a lot riding on this election, a lot that can get discordant, and a lot that's going to be probably not revealed right away. So if you think you're going to know tomorrow who the president is, uh, likely that's going to change probably more than one time over the next week or two. And finally, uh, when we look at the moon in Gemini, he is, the moon, she is making a nice trine to the planet Venus. And that is the only aspect that the moon is, is making to other planets today. Um, and this tends to smooth out any communication issues. So if you remember the heart, Venus rules the heart and uh, love, love energy. So if we remember that uh, with love, all things are possible, that then we can smooth out or have a nice flow of our words if we just slow down the process and remember our hearts in all of that and not just the mind's quick wittedness or quick to uh, use words as verbal gunslinging or as swords, right? Um, this is also where we can find commonality with one another, where we can find harmony in our differences even, right? Our differences don't have to divide us. That's a, an artificial belief. So Venus here in a trine with the moon today, and this actually occurs later in the day. So it takes us into the evening and helps us to smooth out those rough spots, perhaps in our communication or in uh, uh, things that you know, have triggered our minds in some way where your minds, you know, you know, the mind rush. Uh, what do we call that monkey mind in Gemini, right? Monkey mind taking over and uh, chattering at you about things, all things, no things, etc. Ah, Asa, good morning. I was just going to look for you <laughs> to see if you uh, were out there and to say good morning to everybody who I did not say good morning to. Uh, so let me go back here because when I first was out here this morning, there was just JLo and Mimi. Good morning, Kathleen, Mallory, and Loann. Good to see you. And Ingrid, good morning. Debbie Tibbetts, Tumiel, good morning to you. Asa, good morning to you, of course. And Daily Spiritual Vlog, good morning, everyone. Pauline, good morning. And uh, Sue, good morning to you. Asa says, I sent your, uh, oh, she did send my, your question. And uh, the Grand Cross, I'm not sure what, you know, the, the Grand Cross, I don't know what you're hearing about that or what have you. 
um, the grand crosses are sort of happening and not happening, sort of on again, off again. And it, it's happening in different things like fixed stars might be uh, anchoring one of the corners. And uh, I'm looking at this chart of the day today and I see there could be, uh, no, nope, there's no grand cross in this. There's a T-square. The T-square is the more challenging aspect. Uh, a grand cross kind of makes things stable, depending on is it fixed or mutable or is it cardinal? So it can confer upon us the energies of um, starting new things, but never really completing them. It can also bring change where we're constantly changing or we're pushed to let go of something. And they can also be fixed. And if they're fixed, then we tend to get stuck in the pattern and we are unable to move forward. So, uh, but I'm not seeing, I am seeing a grand cross, but it's made up with the North Node and Metis, which is a star, a fixed star and uh, the galactic center anchoring one point on that. Um, and over here, Neptune, perhaps that's a far away Neptune. Yeah, so not necessarily one going on, Pauline. And uh, Asa says, or I mean, Amy, good morning. Oh no, I was late. I got confused with the time change. Didn't change for me in Arizona. So glad to see you all. Pauline says, Gemini knows, known for duality, right? It's a twin sign, right? two, right? Two sides. In fact, as Gemini energy, it's not so much about duplicity or um, duality as it is the feeling that there's always some part of you that's missing. So often Gemini is, is drawn to look for the missing half, that partner or that uh, other part of themselves that they feel like isn't there. So the twins, right? And if you've ever been with twins, my husband is a twin. I swear they know what each other is thinking. That they, if one per, there many times one or the other of them has gotten sick or gotten hurt, and the other one knows it and calls later and says, "Did you get hurt today? Because my back is hurting." And Terry would say, "Yes, I fell today and hurt my back." Blah. It, it's just amazing to me how that happens. So duality. Yes, of being able to see both sides of everything, uh, showing first one side and then the other, but also always that feeling that there's something missing here. Uh, Ursula, good morning to you. Asa says, oh, I already got that one question. Uh, cardinal Grand Cross. A Cardinal Grand Cross would be an initiating cross, right? Things starting new. And uh, I'm not seeing that in here. So let's see what's in the Cardinal. We've got Fire Cardinal. Uh, very little air. How interesting is that? Earth Cardinal from Capricorn. Capricorn to Aries uh, up to, yeah, so we don't really have anything in Cancer. That's the problem with having that kind of uh, a cross right now. So perhaps that's something we can look at later in the week if something like that pops up. And, uh, and if anything, I wouldn't worry about that, Pauline. I'm not sure why you're focused on that right now. <laughs> There's so many other things to focus on than a grand cross. Uh, anyway, JLo says, ha, all the air is New York. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's go back over here now and take a look at what we can expect for the week ahead. So we're looking this week all week. So from yesterday, all the way through Sunday, so at least seven days of Mercury squaring Saturn. So this is a powerful energy as Mercury first hits up that square in retrograde. So Mercury in retrograde squares Saturn yesterday, today, tomorrow, and then it's barely waning before then he turns, he's turned direct and now moving forward to again engage that square. So that square is one where our thinking processes can get disrupted, where our thinking and our speaking can be filled with um, negative, I call it stinking thinking, right? The, the, I, the, the mind thinking certain things and then that affecting your words, affecting your mood, affecting the people around you. So we wanna be careful about that. 
It does have a, a positive side though. And that positive is that it does allow us to focus our energy, focus our minds on something. It gives us some powerful concentration energy, but it can also create that we get caught in this rut of thinking and we can't get out of it. So that's where that stinking thinking comes along. And anytime you have a challenge to Saturn, Saturn wants to have everything in a nice little confined space, limitation, acceptance, boundaries, all that solid foundation kind of thing. Mercury in retrograde is in a wobbly place. So information isn't trustworthy. <laughs> information isn't trustworthy. Your mind isn't really trustworthy at this point in time. It's thinking at the speed of light, perhaps, and messing things up, miscommunications, things like that. So we have to watch that all week long, right? All week long. Then tomorrow, of course, election day here in the U.S., Mercury goes direct while the moon is in Gemini, the sign that Mercury rules, and while we are still under the influence of Mercury retrograde versus uh, squaring Saturn. So it's a, it's a very big mess of a day. It isn't likely going to be known uh, very soon. I'm sure there are going to be all kinds of contentious things coming up about mail-in ballots, about I actually took mine and I dropped it in at the election office because I didn't want any confusion about the mail. So I made sure it went in the box where it belonged uh, to reach the election people. And it was interesting because when I went to do it, it's also uh, right near the library in the, the city of Burlington, which is probably the closest city, big city that it's not even a big city, <laughs> the closest city to where I live. Um, and there was a police car sort of blocking the path to the election box. And I'm like, what the heck? So we had to actually go out a driveway and come in the other one in order to be able to drop off our ballots. So I thought there's a mercury retrograde mess up, right? If you're uh, someone who doesn't, you know, that you could cause somebody just decide to drop it in the mail. And, you know, I don't know. Anyway, all kinds. Of, and now those are little, little teeny weeny things. But just think of the major snafus that could happen. Uh, none the least of which is weather and uh, just the mail in, in general. I don't know if all of you have noticed how slow the mail is these days, yet I'm thankful for the mail people. And there are all kinds of little movements going on right now to put stickers in, like inside of your mailbox that thank them for the job they're doing because it's not really the employees, it's the bureaucracy itself and the problem that the, the bureaucrats bring to the table here in that particular case. So, um, you know, love your mail people, but drop your ballot off in the actual election box if you can. Uh, also on November 4th, uh, Wednesday, we'll have a late void of course moon. That will be when the moon is ready to move out of the sign of Gemini and into Cancer. Remember this nation is a Cancer nation. So I feel like that's kind of showing the volatility of the emotions or the ramping up of emotions come Wednesday uh, later in the day. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. We'll have to wait and see. You know, it, it always seems to work out in this case that, you know, part of half uh, the last several elections have been this way where the nation has been very divided, this nation uh, in the election. And that causes one half to be shocked and the other half to be excited. And so it just makes for a lot of emotion. So expect high emotion. Uh, the moon is the, the planet that rules cancer. So there's gonna be a lot of emotion uh, from Tuesday into the, at least the next three days following that election because of the moon being in cancer. The moon in cancer is opposing the planets in sat in uh, Capricorn. So that would be eventually Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, Pallas Athena. And I see that that gives a very conservative leaning to the energies. And um, I, I know a couple of astrologers have called the election for Biden. I just see that the uh, astrological signature is more conservative than that. So we'll see. I mean, maybe it means a Democrat president with a Republican Congress or vice versa, De Republican president and Democrat Congress. We'll just have to see, but I just kind of see a split coming here. So it'll be interesting. I'm not calling it one way or another, especially not with these kinds of transits going on. 
interesting because on Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday at sunrise, the planet Saturn is going to shift gates in your human design, moving out of the gate 61, where he's been sitting with Pluto in the gate of psychosis, and into the gate 60, which is a, a gate that he spent a good deal of um, 2019 in and early in 2020, and then shifted into the gate of psychosis. And uh, now he is moving, you know, and then went retrograde, right? Now he's forward again. So he's moving back to the gate 60. And the gate 60 is a gate of acceptance of limitation. And I uh, will take a, maybe a deeper look at that gate 60. So we have the planet of limitation going into the gate of the acceptance of limitation. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And Jupiter in the following week joins uh, or later in the month, joins Saturn at the gate 60 in preparation for their conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius next month. I can say next month now because it's November. Uh, so it's an interesting pivotal sort of week, none the least of which is the election results here in this nation. But remember, these are energies that are happening all around the world. It's not just USA centric. I happen to live here and that's why I, I can speak to that. But these energies are flowing around the world in this kind of way. So uh, I, I'm not quite sure how to call that. I just see that there's this real focus on conservatism, not conservatism as in a political movement, but for conservatism, for people in general to have the feeling of being more cautious more uh, thinking about maybe uh, sustainability, thinking more about the foundation that things have built, been built upon, and is that strong or is that weak? Is um, so it, interesting thoughts for everybody. We'll just have to see what the outcome is. Friday, Mercury in direct motion will square Saturn right? That's the second full-on exact square. Uh, and again, we're not done with it. Thursday, I shouldn't have, I, sh I moved Thursday over that way, so I skipped it. Thursday, uh, the sun and earth will change gates. Finally, the sun out of the gates of fear uh, and into the gate of self-expression, gate one. Uh, the earth will be in the most yin gate, the gate of receiving, right? Reception, being open to receiving. And then on Sunday, the moon in Leo will square Uranus. Just what we need, right? Another square to Uranus where surprises happen or the unexpected happens. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any other questions going on here? Gemini, I answered that one. Thanks, Asa. And uh, okay, so let's go on to talk about some of the next transits in our Pleiadian Earth energy. And then I'll take a look at the human design chart where we are now, talk a little deeper about those gates, and then we can uh, wind up the day. Gosh, it's already 8.30, how's that? Uh, so uh, it is a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. I got my wish, by the way, I got sun. Uh, I had a wonderful Halloween. We had a family birthday. We have so many Scorpios in the family, right? We have a lot of Libras, <laughs> but we have a lot of Scorpios. And all four Scorpios have their birthday between October 23rd and November 15th. The two boys had theirs in October. So we had a family Halloween birthday party. That was loads of fun. And then in two weeks, when it's the girl's turn, we're going on a shopping trip to Vancouver. Yay, we're going to celebrate their birthdays, uh, um, hanging out uh, with just girls. It's a girl's day. There's nine girls. I wonder how that's going to go, including me. I'll be the oldest, and the youngest girl is, uh, let's see, she will be God, 11. Ah, wow. So we're going to have, a, uh, it's birthday central in my household from October 1st all the way through December. Actually, all the way through January. Wow. So, all right. Uh, JLo says the wind here is crazy. That's awesome. I love the wind. Uh, JLo says that seems there is a vacuum above taking all that needs to go because it's just been going since yesterday. <laughs> um, uh, JLo says I'm walking in to vote. If you can, go for it. Allison says the winds of change. Ooh, I like that. Allison, that's a great way to look at it. By the way, good morning, everybody. Good morning to you. It's good to see you. 
uh, why did I just see the cat from Betty Boop think that, I think that he whistles, he's black and white, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know much about Betty Boop. Jayla says, I get the weirdest pictures in my mind. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So uh, let's go on, shall we? Uh, today's Pleiadian Earth energy is for exploring. So it, it's an interesting day because we're coming to a standstill, right? Mercury getting ready, slowing down to that uh, place of stationary before he moves to direct tomorrow. And so we have a foundation day. This is a day that brings stability in uh, the energy. It is a day for us not to make big changes or do anything in big ways. It's really just a day where we can assess where we are and uh, what do we need to do to make things more strong or more, um, what am I thinking of, more stable perhaps. Um, that foundation is the part that we're working with today. The four energy can sometimes bring ener the, the energy where we see where we're stuck or where we're too rigid, where we can't seem to move off in any one direction or another. Uh, but that is a good thing because we're looking at the earth energy, which is the, the energy of exploring. And if you want to go exploring, you have to have a fairly strong home base that supports you when you're out there exploring, right? That makes sense. Um, exploring energy in the Mayan calendar was Ben. Ben was the representation of the reed and the need of the reed to be pliable, to be flexible, to yield with the wind, and also to be strong enough not to get broken. So we have the strength, but we have pliability or flexibility. And in exploring energy, it's when new ideas come in. It's where we review all the options that we have for something uh, before we speak, before we act, before we go anywhere or change anything. We review the options and investigate. There's this slant that moves us to investigate what's new, right? What's cutting edge. So that's really powerful energy for seeing what's possible instead of what's in front of us, right? Sometimes we can get blinded by what's right in front of us. Um, it is a day for self-improvement. So working on your own self, bridging your inner and your outer worlds, right? So seeing how your uh, inner thinking, your inner beliefs are showing up as patterns in your outer world. And then if you shift, the corollary would be if you shift the new, the inner world, what you're thinking about, what you're focusing on, what you believe is possible, then it shifts the outer world. So we have that energy and it is a, a reminder today uh, to let your heart guide you through all the craziness, all the changes and all the ups and downs likely to happen throughout this week. So I think it's a very powerful um, piece of information for us to have. Stay in the heart, right? No matter what it looks like, no matter what the chaos is. Remember the full moon when we were talking about having faith in renewal and that this is our having faith that everything is going the way it needs to go, right? In order for us to be uh, moving through a, an evolution of consciousness. So Everything serves us in some way, shape, or form. The hard part is going to be for us in the U.S. tomorrow or the next day or the next day, whenever we get results and it, you think it is what you wanted or not what you wanted and your reaction to that. So remember to stay in your heart, to remember that the full moon's promise was that of renewal, faith in the cyclic renewal, and that all things are moving as they should in the right timing, in the right way, but it's driven by all the choices that we as individuals are making, what we're focusing on, where our hearts are. So today's another little reminder about letting your heart guide you through this crazy time, right? Staying in your heart. And that's a difficult thing sometimes to do, right? So we have to, we have to forcibly remind ourselves this at the moment because it's, it, it's gotten, I think, our natural way of being was always to be in the heart, but through living in a world that values things that are outside of us, right? Productivity, uh, a source, always looking outside of ourselves for answers, not looking within us. So it's hard for us sometimes to think about our hearts 
uh, living from our hearts. So we have to actually put more energy into causing ourselves to focus on living from the hearts, at least in the beginning, until we can get that as a habit and go on into the future with that. Um, now, let's take a look. Uh, any questions about any of the Pleiadian stuff, you can put that in the uh, chat here and Asa will get that to me. And uh, now let's see, I'm going to share my chart or share my screen. Um, I don't remember where I put it. Mm, okay, I think that's it. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen and you're going to see the human design chart for the day and for the week, basically. Um, we're seeing that the sun is sitting at the gate 44.4. By the way, this is the day, this is the day, 44.4. This is the line that pandemics begin in, in human design, not just COVID, but all pandemics or epidemics of major import start in the line, in the gate 44, the line four. So here we have it today, right? One year ago today is where the consciousness of COVID-19 began uh, what what was going to be COVID-19 at that point in time, it was just a mutation in a, in a virus that would soon bust out into the world. So is this the time where it's going to bust back away and go away from us? Or is there some um, other uh, part of this that we have yet to learn. I'm, I'm not that well versed in the pandemic energy. I was kind of shocked to find out that that was the the gate and the line where it began, but here's the echo, right? Today, 44.4 and the 44 is sitting on the spleen and the spleen is the center of course of time, intuition, health, and of course, survival energies. And the survival of the virus perhaps is called into question now, uh, perhaps the survival of species or our fear that we won't survive. And uh, that is, also a gate that brings back the past, right? And we tend to make the truth in the now based on what we know of the past. It's why we've heard things like make America great again and things that want that we, where there's this longing for things from the past. Well, you can't have that, right? You can't have that because that's devolution, not evolution. So we can take the best from the past, the best of the lessons that we've learned. And we can bring that into the now as we prepare for a future. And as we're looking down now at the end of the year and a new beginning, what new things can we bring to the table that can help us move through uh, with truth, not falsehoods, about what's going on in this country with the virus, not just the country in the world, with the virus and uh, with our own personal truth. So this has been a powerful, powerful energy for us, uh, apparently in bringing us to some real key truths. Now the energy of the gate 24, I wanted to talk about that first. So as you guys know, I'm, uh, I'm completing a cycle, a certification in human design that I started back in 2014, funny thing, um, that has since been updated or upgraded, uh, at least through the teacher that I have uh, with this. And so there are new names for gates and new names for centers and things like that. I don't want to confuse you too much, but if you hear me using terminology that's different than what you've originally heard, don't panic. It's the new terminology as we start to look at the world and look at the energies through a quantum viewpoint, right? Not just linear, uh, not just 3D, right? We're elevating to 5D, 6D, 7D, and we're looking at things now in a more quantum way. So the earth, which is sitting right here at the gate 24, is now, uh, in the old days, this was called the gate of rationalization. It is now called the gate of blessings. Don't you love it? The gate of blessings. And I'll tell you why the mastery in this particular gate. And that's what this human design system is all about, right? That's what the gene keys is all about. In a way, that's what astrology is all about. It's about mastering yourself, right? Mastering you, finding the truth about you and living from that mastery. Well, the mastery here is to recognize that all of the experiences that we as human beings are having oh my God, I just had the strangest deja vu. Wow, 
that was weird. I just saw me already telling you guys this uh, in a different sequence, but weird. Oh, so weird. All right. Anyway, uh, recognizing, <laughs> I don't even know if I can do this now, uh, that all the experiences that we've had, good, bad, ugly, and all in between, have the potential for our growth and our expansion. They're all coded in everything. Even if it's not a pleasant experience, there's something there, a kernel for you, so that you can redefine your story, right? The story of your life, so that you can reflect on what you've learned, and so that you can reframe everything. I can't even tell you the, 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 the feelings I'm having right now chills from top to bottom and just this, I've done this before, I've said this before, I've done this before. And giving you all the opportunity to change the story that you're talking, that you're saying about yourself, to be grateful for all of your life's experiences and to liberate yourself from the thinking, the stories that are no longer true right? That are no longer true for you. So in an unbalanced expression, right? So we remember in human design, we don't necessarily look at the levels in gene keys. We look at the shadow, the gift in the city. Well, now we're going to look at mastery, the unbalanced expression, and what are the lessons and challenges that we're learning here. So in the unbalanced expression, we have this tendency to want to protect ourselves by staying stuck in the old patterns, right, in the old patterns and refusing to transform, right, we don't want to change, we get stuck, right, we get into that fixed grand cross energy, or the fixed cross energy where we don't want to move. Um, and then we rationalize our staying here in that stuck position. Um, so that, uh, because we feel maybe white one, we don't feel we deserve more. Or two, we're afraid that if we put ourselves out there in a new way that our hand is going to get slapped or, you know, we're going to be pushed backwards. So the lesson or the challenge is to learn to allow what you truly deserve, which is anything that you want, right? To find in your life, not to rationalize allowing less, not to uh, rationalize yourself staying without blessings, uh, but to use your painful experiences in your life as the energy, the fodder, the coal, the, the ignition point of change and to catalyze transformation for yourself. So the earth sitting here at the gate 24 is prompting that from within us. And then the sun at the gate 44 down here now is the, the full force of what we can expect. And that's truth, right? Mastery in the gate 44 here is a, the ability to see the patterns that you have continued to live by and that have created pain, right? And to bring an awareness to that pain, to that pattern, so that you can break that old pattern. You can bust out of it. You can free yourself from it. And in doing that, you gain more value in yourself, more self-worth. You see yourself in a different way. You basically write yourself a new story, right? A new story. It's time for new stories. In the unbalanced expression of the gate 44, we have fear and paralysis that the patterns of our life are insurmountable. We're doomed to keep experiencing the same thing because patterns repeat and I see the handwriting on the wall. I'm already going to predict, because this is in the logic circuit, I'm going to predict that X, Y, Z over here is going to happen. And it isn't true. Those things are not equals. They don't equal each other, right? So the lesson here is to not get stuck in past patterns, right? The truth is that you need to be able to cultivate the courage to move forward and to be able to step out of those patterns by rewriting the story. So uh, the keynotes here, fear of the past, and especially fear of the past repeating itself. And there's a funny thing about this gate 44. I think I told you guys this before um, when we were first looking ahead is that this is a gate of smelling. 
uh, it's called Claire Olifactans, uh, for whoever it was out there that you and I were having a conversation, I don't remember who this was, where we were trying to figure out what that Claire was. It's Claire Olifactant, Claire smelling, like you can almost smell where you're off, where, where you need to move in a different direction, or you can smell a rat, right? We have that. You can smell where truth isn't in fact truth. So interesting, if you have that sign natally, uh, you may have a very good nose. And my husband, I have this gate, uh, my Neptune sits at this gate, and my husband laughs at me all the time because I swear I smell everything. And uh, yeah, even where he puts his little stash of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, weed products. And <laughs> um, I'm like, I smell it. Where did you put it? Where is it? Not because I want it, but because I can smell it. And it drives me crazy until I could discover where it is. So the smell is in the gate 44. And isn't it funny that COVID... Um, one of the uh, identifying uh, uh, symptoms is the loss of smell, which is, of course, related to the taste, right, and loss of, loss of taste. So I think it's interesting that that's a part of this COVID experience. Not that it's funny. I don't mean that, but funny like odd or interesting in that respect. Uh, as we look at this gate for uh, the week or for this uh, this. Uh, uh, body graph for the, the moment that we're in, we still see this connection between the gate 44 and the gate 26, which is all about integrity, spiritual integrity, your physical integrity, your moral integrity, for lack of a better word, ethics, let's call it that, your ability to be transparent in what, who you are, what you're doing, etc. cetera. Uh, we still have Neptune sitting at gate 22, which is our involution, right? We're changing from the inside out. We haven't gotten to the solar plexus mutation yet where the 55 takes over. Right now we're working on the inner us and the changes in our DNA, in, in the structures of our cells, etc. cetera. Uh, let's see what else calls to mind here. We still have uh, planets sitting at other fear gates. 32 is where Mercury is sitting right now. We may feel like we're still caught up in that success and failure. Um, gate 18 is where Venus is sitting. And this, these two planets are the reason why we're not letting go of the fear of the spleen yet. The sun is moving on as we move into Thursday of this week, but Venus and um uh, Mercury will still be sitting there and their personal planet. So it means personally, we're still feeling the sting of pain and of fear and of the wounding from fear. So Venus is just now at the gate 18. It's the first gate that's usually hit with the um, uh, spleen. So it, as the transits go, so there's this perfection thing going on, this judgment and criticizing of each other going on. And 32 is, oh no, we're going to fail. Um, and that, you know, we know that success isn't about what you do. It's about who you are, right? Who you are as a human being. Are you loving and giving? And uh, are you learning? Are, are you truly worthy? Yes, you are, right? That's the part we need to remember. Okay. Questions, comments, uh, I think what I want to do, and Allison, I'm going to jump to the gun. You may have already said that out there, but I'm going to draw us two cards for the week. And uh, one of them, I'm going to draw a Wisdom of the Oracle. And then I'm going to draw us an animal guide from the Spirit Animal deck. So let's get some wisdom for us for the week, right? Wisdom, we all need this. So wisdom, collective wisdom for the week. Um, this is for the collective wisdom. Chop wood. <laughs> I love it. Chop wood, carry water. Did anybody ever heard that saying? Uh, it's about live your life, right? Do what you need to do, even in the midst of all these major spiritual things going on. Chop wood and it came out upright. And it is card number 42, which is a six. So chop wood. And it says, being grounded in everyday experience and humility. The Oracle's message, there are times when the big dream is meant to lie dormant in your consciousness so that you can pay attention to the simple chores in your life. 
Consider why pruning a tree is the forerunner of delighting in the beautiful blooms when it is in full blossom. The mundane act of pulling off dead leaves, watering the soil, and then leaving it to be, to let nature take its course is an important step in manifestation. Taking your attention away from your goal brings you into a state of receptivity. This is the deeper purpose for releasing attachment. When you engage in everyday tasks in a meditative, contemplative way, you clear your energy to receive your aha, which brings you ever closer to what you seek. All right, chop wood. Stay grounded. Good, 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 good. I think that helps when you have a runaway Mercury, right? Mercury doing all kinds of interesting things, causing your mind to jump and go up and down and so much information coming at us. So stay grounded, chop wood, carry water, do the dishes, clean off your desk. And we get mouse spirit in protection, <laughs> echoing the same thing, uh, tend to the small things card number 40, which is a four, uh, but it was in protection. So it came out this way. I don't think we've ever gotten mouse because I have no idea what that means. 10 to the small things and chop wood, uh, 40. Okay. So we're going this direction and it says, are you too caught up in details, micromanaging others and stressing out because you want everything to be perfect? Are you procrastinating because you want every detail to be just right and losing track of time in your priorities? Mouse spirit wants you to listen to your intuition that tells you that the detail you fear you're overlooking will only appear when you stop obsessing. Mouse spirit will lead you to the nuances you need to notice and will diligently work to support you if you take a breath and trust that guidance will be provided. Small gestures carry great power right now, and maybe you need to take action toward discovering what is going on that you might not be seeing, or toward mending a relationship or a situation. Ask a question, do a little research, and listen for mouse spirits' quiet little squeak telling you, look here and attend to this detail. Love it. So we have mouse and chop wood, right? Chopping wood getting out of the details. Hmm. All right. That is it for me this morning. If you are a member in the Academy, remember tomorrow is our first new lesson in our human design series we're doing on, uh, we start tomorrow on the centers. And for those of you who are not members, you can certainly join the membership at any time. As soon as you do, you have access to everything we've already done, as well as to the things that we're doing next, all for only $13 a month or $144 for the whole of the year. Um, it's worth it, I'm sure, for you to learn more about you and about what is happening in the now. Um, that is it for me. I will see you all tomorrow morning. Take care, everyone.